Hello. Well, today I'm here to talk about a film I saw this summer on the big screen and thought about uh, talking about it before, but I thought we'll just wait until it's October because, you know, it's a horror film, Halloween time and all that, so I thought it'd be very, you know, a great, uh, Just a great uh, time to talk about uh, this film, and that is uh, *Quiet Place 2. Got the steelbook uh, version of the film. Also, I got the uh, steelbook of the original. I already showed these off when I uh, mentioned or talked about the films I got uh, this summer. I actually wanted to get this last year, you know, it was at Best Buy. Fortunately, I wasn't able to get out of Best Buy a whole lot, uh, not because of a bunch of lockdowns or anything, but really because there's other things going on, other things you, you really needed to where, you know, going out to Best Buy to like, get one movie uh, was not something that was particularly really on my mind a whole lot um and i didn't even for whatever reason think about you know going online i think because you know i had done quite a bit, bit of online shopping that you know i actually wanted to go back to the actual store and i heard they were having the this special steel book which i was able to get online obviously um like on eBay or Amazon, uh, very reasonable. Also unopened, so that's also great. Works well. Um, film is still great. I love it. And I love the second film. Um, the second film it, it expands upon the universe very well. Follows the Abbott family uh, as they go. You know, after the events of the first film, spoiler if you have never seen the first film, um, I talked about that, the film in 2018 when I got it on Blu-ray, because I didn't get to see it in the big screen. Too many things were going on that just made it so I just wasn't able to really see it at all. But when I got it on Blu-ray, I, I jumped at it. Um, and I made sure to rewatch it before I saw this on the big screen and saw it and I seen it again. And at the very end of the first film, uh, again, spoilers for anybody who has not seen it at all, um, uh, Lee Abbott, uh, played by uh, John Krasinski, dies. He dies sacrificing himself so his kids can live. Um, and his wife, Evelyn's sees him die on security cameras he has around that place, uh, place to see these, uh, you know, creatures, uh, which we later, in this film, first, uh, the second film, we actually get to see in the first scene how these uh, things came to be on Earth, and we, uh, and they came from outer space, and they're aliens, and, um, yeah, they wreak havoc, and people find out fairly quickly if you make noise you're dead you know and so people have to be as quiet as they possibly can be um and so because that john krasinski gets to be in the very beginning of the film he wrote this film by himself he wrote this the first film but that was also written by um Scott Beck and Brian Woods, um, who originally wrote the script, and then John Krasinski wrote the script again, but with his own inputs, and then all three of them wrote it. Um, and, uh, yeah. Also, those two guys are from Iowa, so that was pretty cool to uh, uh, learn about. Um, one was born in Denver, but raised in Iowa met in college and have been writing films together and 
so this film was not written by them with Krasinski. He wrote the this all by himself, and it's a great film. Expands upon the first film very well, showing exactly how things began, and also, um, you know, they meet more people. Um, uh, Emmett, played by Killian Murphy, uh, is a friend that we get to see um, in the film. And um, he staying you know, like in a <clears throat> old like warehouse basically and has refuge and you know uh, he's very hesitant about even helping them because you know he you know it's like you know it's like he can't stay there's not enough food and all that you know Marcus gets a uh, his leg in a bear trap that is not very that is not good at all because you know first off he's gonna be in a lot of pain and that's not good obviously and on top of the pain he's gonna scream and they can't scream in this world and so his mom's trying to get, keep him from screaming but he can't and of course at the end of the first film they found how to um hurt the, you know, the aliens have a radio and a microphone, and if you put it against it, then the two against each other makes this loud, annoying sound that is not pleasant at all to hear, and when done so, the, uh, uh, it hurts the aliens, at which point you can then kill them, because a weak spot is shown, and they, the family has a shotgun, and they use that to kill the aliens here um, and you know Reagan uh, yeah but she uh, she was able to figure out how to wound and hurt um, these aliens and some people have questioned how it is like the first person or the only person we get to see you know harm these aliens these creatures is from a girl who you know, she's deaf, so she has like a like a hearing aid and implement that's able to help, you know, have the radio and the microphone and also that hearing aid, you know, on top of the two together, the hearing aid on top of it all makes that annoying noise, not just, you know, the microphone and the radio, though I'm sure if you did that to me, uh, the, you know, the each other that would still you know very uh make a very unpleasant sound that nobody likes but for whatever reason i just forgot for a moment that that's a big reason how they uh, uh were able to uh you know uh, harm the creatures and the aliens um but you know we actually have no idea others if they know about the weakness for all we know there could be many people who have figured it out but because you know communications are down and not a lot of people are listening to the radios watching tv or anything that could make quite a bit of noise <clears throat> uh, people aren't exactly you know using a lot of the stuff that people would normally use day to day like TVs, computers, what have you cuz you know things could make noise. And so they uh there could be many people who have actually found out about this weakness. And we also find out another weakness in this film. Um I guess spoiler alert uh of sorts, um, but uh, so you can skip ahead a little bit, maybe in a minute or so. But you know, the uh, water is a weakness, they aren't able to swim, 
a lot of people think that's a problem because, you know, why would that be a problem? You know, they can't swim, so they drown. Though some say we don't know exactly if they drown or not, but, you know, we can assume that is the case. Um, part of the, uh, you know, the thought on that is also, you know, You know, their body is like sort of like armor, like bulletproof essentially, except when the weakness is shown with their head, where you can then shoot it or stab it or, I don't know, throw a grenade or something that would, you know, do it in. You know, you could do something like that. Um, so, because their uh, body, and some see, people say that's very unlikely how like shotguns or rifles or this or that could not at all penetrate that. And, and maybe who knows maybe some military grade weaponry and you know higher caliber uh, bullets um, and uh, missiles and other things maybe they are able to kill them very easily but again um, because communications are very wonky and not very something that people are very you know much uh using it could be that the military isn't able to exactly contact or do anything that everybody is able to completely you know uh, uh get access to because you know it could be some people are very rural and could be yeah, without a you know the frequency of what's transmitting might not reach some people. It could be outside of a city, or, you know, far out into the woods, or in the countryside, what have you. So people might not be able to get it as a result. Which is even said, you know, because there's music that plays, which actually leads to uh, uh, Reagan trying to go off and find where the radio this radio station is playing this song, you know, Beyond the Sea, he, uh, you know, he says to them that, you know, Evelyn and the kids, they couldn't get it where they were because they were not, like, the frequency like just does not reach them. It reaches a certain point, and they are beyond the point where they could uh, hear it because, you know, Lee was listening, like, every day to hear anything. He wasn't really getting any sort of response of people out there that could help them and he could help and so on and so forth but because of the frequency and how far away they were they unfortunately were not able to you know able to help each other so help others so you know she goes off to try and find you know, find him or find this place uh, Emmett goes out to look for her and go with her um, he also lost his family um, which is unfortunate you know then at some point he lost his kids and then he uh, lost his wife and um Of course, the Abbott family has another, another child, um, uh, which I actually discussed, I think, in the first video regarding that, like how you know people were like, "That's not a very practical thing to have." You know, it's just that whole baby, her being pregnant and giving birth, is just a sort of a plot device for suspense and everything. Which, yes, but also there is the fact that sometimes when people and couples, you know, they lose a child or something. They console with each other and everything, and it can get quite intimate. And then after a while, you know, it can get, you know, they can get pregnant and have another child. Um, so those are just some things throughout the these two films that people have talked about. Um, the 
like either problems with the films that when you kind of take a step back and look at everything in certain situations yeah you can understand and say like certain things are only done just for the suspense and horror element uh, um, as well as you know you could say it's sort of like just to make certain creatures weak you know you know there's a weakness with the loud noise and frequency you know hurting them but then of course you know how exactly uh, this sort of thinly kind of alien creature is able to be as bulletproof as it is you know well we don't know exactly how bulletproof exactly their skin is um, you know, again, military-grade weapons could possibly do a lot of damage and kill them very easily without the frequency and shooting the weak spot. You could be shoot anywhere with a military-grade gun or maybe a rocket launcher or anything and, you know, do it. You know, but people, you know, what we've seen, just have, like, hunting rifles, shotguns, uh, revolvers, pistols and such. Um, you know, good weapons for uh, something like this kind of world, but, um, you know, uh, it's at the same time, you know, with an a alien creature that's not from here, you know, you don't know a whole lot about them. And so it kind of makes sense that there could be like more than just one weakness, I would say. Um, at least for me, just looking in and having rewatched these films and hearing people and what their critiques are and all that, so yeah, I mean that's just me. Um, there's also a cool, like a sort of like a progression with the character of Marcus. He, um, you know, in the first film he was understandably scared because of everything that's going on. He was like, you know, he and his sister like, like, like teenager she's like a teenager he's about like if he's not like 13 he's like 12 become about to be 13 or so and you know the, 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 you know obviously he's very scared and his dad in the first film tr takes him out to you know fishing and other things and that you know men should do to you know help take care of the family and um we see this growth with Marcus throughout the film, and uh, I actually like that he's, you know, he's alone, having to look over his baby brother, um, which they have the uh, box with the you know, oxygen tank, but you know, it's a bit low. And they need to make sure that the uh, get more oxygen for the baby because you know babies cry, and you know put the baby in the box until you know it's able to. They're able to get to somewhere safe that, you know, hopefully, you know, the baby can be, you know, go out and about of sorts, like, being carried and all without uh, not having to, you know, you know, make a sound or something. You won't have to worry about these uh, aliens, you know, coming to kill him or the family. Um, and, um, you know, I don't want to say any more, um, but I think it's a really f uh, interesting film, it's re or a great film, uh, I like where the story has gone since the first film and how it's expanded. Um, I will say I, it does seem to end with a potential third film, uh, possibly happening, um. They're going to have a spin-off, like, to sort of show some other place within this universe, like how other people are doing, and I think that will be interesting. And then John Krasinski apparently has an idea for a third film. Uh, Emily Blunt said he, like, has an idea, um, but we'll see if he uh, is fleshed out and he, you know... If it does, I think it would be kind of cool if this was like a trilogy. You know, you could have spinoffs and such with other places around like the country or the world just to see how all this affects 
you know, other people besides this core family we've been following. And um, if it does, I think it would be really cool to see John Krasinski in the third film. Maybe at the very end, might be a scene before they have, you know, kids. You know, regardless if, you know, Evelyn is pregnant, could be, you know, at the farm and interacting with people like Emmett and other friends they have and just to sort of see how everything was like. We got a glimpse of it uh, with the, in the second film at the very beginning with day one. But I would just be curious as to see how that is. And they could do that at the very end of the film or at the beginning like they did in the first film. Um, but I just kind of, I think it would be really cool if, you know, you know, Lee was in, uh, all of these movies, like the core series, at least. You know, if, you know, uh, John Krasinski uh, does expand upon his idea and writes a script to then direct and produce, I think it would really be really cool just to have all these members of the family be in these films, um, these core characters. Um, but that's me. Uh, that's my thoughts on A Quiet Place 2. Um, have you seen this film? Um, if so, uh, do you like it? Do you dislike it? Do you like the first one better? Do you like this one better? I think I like the first one uh, better. I think I like that more. But, you know, that's not overly surprising or overly surprising. Most films with the sequels, uh, sequels usually don't aren't as good as the first film, and that's nothing against the sequels. Um, it's just usually hard for a sequel to be better. Um, and this sequel is excellent. I think it expands upon you know the first film very well. Continues the story, tells what happened that got everything in motion in the first place, which I like. And if they make a third film, I would be very interested in it. Um, I would also be interested in seeing what this spin-off will be. Um, because people say that's the third film. Well, it's not technically part three. It's just within the universe of A Quiet Place. So, have to see what happens with that development and how things are going with that. Um, but yeah, um, you know, there might not be as many you know, horror sort of themed uh, videos this month. Or maybe they will be. I don't know. I mean, there's five weeks. So there, at least I could talk about four other movies. I don't know if I'll have a sixth or seventh one at some point. Uh, you know, never say never. But at this point in time, uh, I have some ideas of films I want to talk about. But, you know, I, I, this past summer I did Friday the 13th on all those films, so I think in a way I got, you know, I got a lot of horror uh, done this year. Uh, and um, and that was fun. And so was this. Talking about this film was fun. Talking about the first film a bit, again, was also fun. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you think uh, in the comments. Um, if you want, uh, I hope you're all having a great day, having a great weekend, and I, I hope you'll all have a great week. See you all next time. Bye.